oxygen in their waters. Now, um, scientists like myself are saying, well, we can use it for all sorts of other things, like the protection of seabed habitats. And that's not what the fishermen originally signed up to, so there are issues to do with that in terms of data protection. The Northeast Atlantic Fisheries Commission manages the exploitation of international waters in the region. We spoke to Kjartan Hoydal to find out what is being done to protect corals in these areas. One of the things that hasn't really been discussed politically is how much do we want to close? Uh, Greenpeace has recently suggested that 40% should be the, the aim. I would have thought most uh, governments think about something like 5 to 10%. But why is there a delay in protecting coral reefs? The problem is it should be based on scientific evidence. The scientists are not in a, in a position yet to give a precise answer as they do on, say, uh, catch levels and what have you. The science is progressing apace. In December 2005, scientists from around the world traded information at the third international symposium on deep sea corals held in Miami. But some think we shouldn't wait for the science to be complete before protecting the reefs. If there are areas where clearly the bottom trawling can take place in a sustainable manner without adverse impact, then the trawling can resume. But until we have these areas mapped out and have a better understanding of the biogeographic patterns of coral distributions in the deep sea, allowing trawling in areas simply because we don't know yet whether corals are there or not or how many are exactly where they are uh, isn't good enough. Even with agreement on the percentage of reefs to be closed, Vessels from countries outside the Commission's jurisdiction fish whatever and wherever they like. Our main concern at the moment is what we call IUU fishing. That there are vessels which are, are under flags like Panama, Georgia, Cambodia, or whatever you have, which are not bound by our rules because they're not parties to the agreement. They can do whatever they want. They can, they can fish uh, in excess of quotas. They can, they, they can trawl over areas that shouldn't be in, in collected areas. We can't do anything about it. Jan Helger and his team believe they have another weapon in the fight to save the corals. The team have developed a CAMPOD system that can bring back high-definition pictures of the corals. It comprises a giant leap in picture quality. We know that it's very important to get our results out, first of all to, to the government and the managers, but also to the public. And that's why we use a lot of videos that is, it's, it's telling more than a thousand words, of course, when you see these fantastic areas down there. Then people, they intuitively understand that this must be protected. I never heard a person here in Norway after looking at the videos and getting a little information that object a protection. I've not heard it. So, I mean, information, it helps. It works. Today is the first time Jan Helga's team will use the high-definition camera on a coral survey trip. They hope it will help them find the intact reef they still feel is out there. Now we are close uh, to the top of the reef, but uh, we have seen still a lot of damages here as we saw in the front of the reef, a little lower to the north. However, we have more live corals here than, than we saw earlier. Still we see signs of um, fishing activity, like nets and, and trawl tracks. So it is quite impacted also here. Further on, there was a surprise in store. Yes, here we are really nice. Now this is a fantastic area, a colourful landscape. Sometimes it's really breathtaking because it, 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 it's so fantastic that deep down in the dark here facing the Arctic we have these wonderful colourful scenes. It's, it's, it's amazing, it's almost unbelievable. And as far as we know, this is the northernmost uh, intact Lofelia reef complex. Finding the reef further increases the known distribution area of these corals and emphasizes how much there is still to learn. It's a little difficult to find a landing place here. It is uh, steep and we don't want to, 
to damage the camera or get scratches on the lens. Yes. Now we have landed and uh, it seems that we got a nice and interesting place to take some close-ups. Ah, it's beautiful. Oh, fantastic colors. Pink. Pink uh, Gorgonia. And here you can see the complex three-dimensional structure that uh, these reefs represent for fish, for example. The ling loves to go in between uh, the coral heads and hide itself. There's a new whole new world that's opening for us. And we can, we can have a close-up that was unthinkable only last cruise because of the new camera system we have on board. All the animals, the fish, the sponges are just incredible. It's like going to Mars and seeing something living there that nobody's seen before. But this is in our backyard. It's not Mars. This is just a few miles offshore. Not that deep, 1,500 meters deep. It's not that deep. It's right here. Let's protect it first. Let's protect it before we destroy it.